Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve longest increasing subsequence, lead code number 300. So we're given an integer array nums, and we need to return just the length of the longest strictly increasing subsequence. So subsequence is different than a subarray. So you could have this two, and then this three, and then this seven, and then say the 18. So the longest increasing subsequence is two, three, seven, 101, and the length of that would be four. So what you'd want to return is just the length, which is four. Okay. In this example here, we can see you do zero, one, and then two, and then three. So you can again have four for that one. And really stupid example here, if they're all sevens, of course, there's just one. Okay, let's use this example, one, three, six, seven, nine, four, ten, five, six. So the idea is to create an array of the same length. So these are all going to be just initialized to be ones. And what it represents is, say we fix some value of i here. If we're worrying about this position here and what that going to represent. It's going to be the maximum length increasing subsequence, assuming we're ending in this value here. So assuming we're actually using this seven and ending our subsequence in that, meaning we can have the option of using whatever we want over here, but we're actually ending it and using this seven. What is the maximum length increasing subsequence of these? Well, one is a fine guess so far, because of course you can use just the seven. So that's kind of why we set all of these to be ones. But is there something better? Well, yes, if you're using this seven, you're also allowed to use the six and the three and the one. So you can actually use all of these things. And as we'll see later in the code, this would actually be set to four. So this is the maximum length increasing subsequence, assuming we're ending and using this value right here. Okay, so we would build it up in order or basically bottom up style. And so we would start at the beginning. Assuming we're using this one here, what is the maximum length increasing subsequence? Well, it's just gonna be using the one. So the one is correct here. Now the next value here, this is going to be the position considering these two values and assuming we're using this three, what is the maximum length increasing subsequence? Well, it is actually the one and the three. So you can get two here. So that's gonna be set to two. This position will be assuming we're using this six here. What is the length of the longest increasing subsequence ending in this? Well, we can use all three, one, three, and six. And so this is going to be set to three. Very similarly, this seven will be set to this four, and this is going to be set to the five. You can see we're kind of just increasing here. So that makes sense. Now this is where it gets very interesting is when this gets smaller here. So if we are ending and using this four here, well, that's very limiting. So, so you definitely can't use the nine, you can't use the seven, and you also can't use the six. What you can use is the three as well as the one. So this position actually gets set to three. Okay, now if we're ending in the 10, then you could use the four, that's fine, but then you can't use most of these, you're stuck only using this. So you could have those four, that's at least better than one. However, what's even better than that is using all of this stuff, okay? So this is going to be set to six, and so the maximum length length increasing subsequence of the total array, as we'll see, is going to be this position right here. Okay, if we are ending in the five, then again, that's pretty limiting. You're using the four, then you would use the three and the one. So you could have this as four. That's going to be your maximum right there. And the last position here, given that we're using this six, well, again, that's just going to be like one better than this one. So that's going to be set to a five. So it's very common in dynamic programming problems to have this DP array be increasing and you'd kind of just return your final value here. But for this one, it's very interesting. You'd actually return basically the max of your DP array and that's going to give you that answer of six. So it's not necessarily over here because that's assuming that you're kind of wanting to use that final value there. Because if you picture that this was say like a two, for example, well, that's extremely limiting. All you'd be allowed is this one here. So you'd want to find something more likely so somewhere in the middle where you have a really big value and you have all of this other stuff that you could use as well. So you could get the max of your array and that's going to output six. Okay, that's great and all, but that was intuition. You know, I wasn't really describing an algorithm there. I was making very vague decisions. So here we're going to make very specific decisions on our algorithm, which is that we're going to use a nested for loop. So we're going to fix an I at this position right here, the second position, and we'll get a J for now is going 
going to be here. Now we're going to keep asking the question, hey, is nums at i bigger than nums at j? Yes, it is. Since nums at i is bigger, well, whatever we had in this position at j, this was the number that we set for the maximum length increasing subsequence ending at this number. But if nums at i is bigger than nums at j, then wouldn't it be better to end at i? That's basically the idea. And so if you could get one by ending at j here, then you can get one plus one by ending in this number instead. And so this is actually going to be two, saying that, hey, out of these two numbers here, it's actually better not to end in one, it's actually better to end in three. Okay, so we would move over i and then we'd start j again at the beginning here and say, okay, nums at i is bigger than nums at j. So if this value here is the maximum length increasing subsequence ending at one, well, hey, wouldn't it be better to end at six? Well, yes, it would be. So we can get one from this. And so we could actually get one plus one, which is two instead. Then we would move over j again. Nums at i is bigger than nums at j. So this guy is bigger than him. Hey, if we can get two, by ending at j here, and nums at i is bigger than nums at j, wouldn't it be better to end at i? Yes, it would. So if we can get two from here, then we can actually get two plus one, which is three by ending at i instead. Okay, we would move over i, j starts at the beginning, and we see again, nums at i is bigger than nums at j. So if you can get one by ending at j, you can actually get two by ending at i. If we move j over, you can see, okay, it is bigger. And so we can get two by ending at j, it would actually be 2 plus 1, which is 3, if you instead end it at i. Very similar over here, nums at i is still bigger than nums at j. Over here at j, you can get 3 by ending at j. It would be better to end at i, and so you could actually get 4. So that is again what we created at the beginning. So again, you would return the max of your DP array, which is equal to six. So here is your algorithm, let's code that up. Okay, for this, we're going to simply write the bottom up dynamic programming solution using tabulation. You could of course do the top down, but for these more complex ones, I'm gonna stick to just the most optimal stuff. So the time complexity of this is ultimately going to be big O of N squared. We're basically just doing a standard nested for loop. The space complexity of this to build up the dp array that's going to take up o of n space okay so we'd get n is equal to the length of the numbers and the dp array will set that equal to an array of n ones so those are n ones and we'll go through for i in the range of one to n we can safely start at one because we know the very first value would just be one because you're just only considering the very first value and then we'll do for j in the range of i so this is going to give in a fixed i we start j at the beginning of zero and go up until i minus one so all the previous values now if nums at i is strictly bigger than nums at j whatever we had at j we could actually get one more by ending at i instead so we'd set dp at i equal to be the maximum of itself we don't want to make it smaller and dp at j plus one so you could get dp at j by ending at j but since nums at i is bigger Bigger than nums at j, it's actually better to end in i. Okay, at the end of this, you would need to return the very maximum of your dp array, and this is a great solution. Okay, now I will show you that there actually is a more optimal solution using binary search, and you can get this down to n log n. I'm sure there's someone out there that'll also tell you the more optimal one if you're curious. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day. Bye bye.